Well, so I'm at a supercharging station in Asheville, North Carolina, which by the way is quite packed. <laughs> in fact, there's people right next to me, so I feel kind of embarrassed talking. But anyway, you'll have to forgive the kind of humming sound. It is the Tesla charging itself up. It's only supposed to take about 40 minutes to get to about 85%, so that's nice. Um, we may end up having to hit it once more before we leave, or we could catch a, a supercharger in Greenville. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, it's kind of interesting to be here where I'm by a Dillard's and a Cole Hahn outlet. Anyway, it's a relatively nice area, so I could go shopping or something, but I think I'll catch up on some YouTube videos instead. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, what I wanted to talk about today was the... Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I got distracted by a Model X. Man, those things are pretty cars. Uh, anyway, what I wanted to talk about today was the um, the the way that the visualization, even in the non-beta version, really shows a lot about what Tesla is doing in terms of their neural networks and also their visualization process. And it's the rejection aspect of it that's super cool. So what I notice is, and I wish I could put in some video clips here, but I'm probably just going to post this live. So you'll have to go and check it out, or maybe I can re-release this later if people want to see. But if you notice when you drive past traffic cones, like uh, construction cones or something, it shows them. Of course, it always shows the little kind of conic shape ones, not the garbage can looking ones or other things, but it is interesting. It does. It definitely shows those. And also when you drive past speed limits, signs it shows those very clearly and it of course updates because if it goes past a 55 or something it will switch to 55 um, but what I notice is that it doesn't show anything else and that is amazing because that means it's rejecting most of what it's seeing it's rejecting light poles it's rejecting other road signs that are not important or at least not visualizing those. Uh, it's also rejecting cars that are too far away. So if you're in like say a five lane road, like near Atlanta or something, it will only show the cars in your lane and the cars in the lanes next to it. And those cars, it will visualize. Um, weirdly enough, it really doesn't like trucks. I don't know why, but it doesn't visualize trucks nearly as well as it, it visualizes sedans and pickup trucks and cars like that. Uh, for some reason, it, it will only show those at the last minute and it, they kind of jiggle around in space. So I'm hoping that the beta version, when I get it soon, um, will actually show that more clearly and will show the trucks because it is something that's a concern. If it's not visualizing those trucks particularly well, it means it could be dangerous around them. But anyway, I just thought it was really interesting. I just kind of wanted to bring this up. It, it's what you don't see in the visualizations that actually tells you more about the capability of Tesla's vision system than what you do see. <clears throat> so what I mean by that is there's a lot of stuff in the world. As a driver, you're driving along and you see other things like a tree by the side of the road or a tire or something that's far away, and you reject that stuff. That's part of the natural aspect of, of visual acuity with uh, with human vision. And so if we couldn't do that, of course, we would be unable to drive because we'd be distracted by everything that was going on. So what happens instead is that we reject most of it and only see things like speed limit signs and exit signs. And of course, cars that are too close to us and within a danger area or something that we might have to prepare for. And I can see that Tesla is doing that also. The automatic driving is actually adjusting itself and it's rejecting the things that it doesn't need to show. Now, I'm sure it's being processed processed at some point, but it's being thrown out by the network and it's only showing the things that actually matter. And that reveals a huge amount about how sophisticated Tesla's vision system is. And quite frankly, I'm really actually blown away by it. I, like, it's amazing to be able to reject that much stuff in real time. Now, sometimes it feels just a teeny bit late, like it's catching up as it goes by. But it always, for example, sees speed limit signs, even when they're partially occluded by something like a truck or something that's in the way, it will catch that and it will see the speed limit sign. So again, it's just amazing. Andre Carpathy and his team kind of blow my mind. I just don't know how they do it. Anyway, so I just wanted to do a super quick thing. And just like I said, I'm just kind of sitting here waiting to charge up anyway. I'm about to catch up on some YouTube videos for like 40, 45 minutes or as long as it takes to charge. But in the meantime, I thought I would post this. Hopefully it's interesting to some people and I will talk to you guys next time. Oh, and don't forget to, you know, ask me questions in the comments or at my email, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, see you later.